It's called the pumice plain. It's directly below the crater. Four miles from the volcano, the enormous Spirit Lake is scarcely recognizable. The avalanche has lifted its bed more than 200 feet. The surface is smothered in dead trees. Hundreds of species of aquatic life, including insects, amphibians, and fish, are killed. So that's Spirit Lake in the in the background there, and I think behind there is Mount Adams, looking down towards uh, looking down towards Oregon. I thought it was Mount Rainier when I first saw it, but uh, it isn't because right over there is Mount Rainier, and it's huge, and it's right here. We got these three big volcanoes all right next to each other, like three little pimples on the Earth, and this one behind me here just popped. The other ones are full of pus. They're going to go any day now, so you better watch out. All right, so we're talking about Google Search, right? And Google Search, as I said. The three parts of it that we're going to talk about are indexing, which we've talked about already, querying, which we're going to talk about now, and then results, storage and results, which we'll talk about, um, we'll talk about next time. So indexing, you remember I talked about, was where Google goes out and forms this giant index, not so dissimilar to the index in the back of a book, and allows you to search. Now, now we're going to get to the part where you actually search. And the, the technical word instead of search, we're going to call it querying. And what's a query? Query is simple, just, simply just a question. It's a question that's asked. Um, and you can see in this graph, it's a very interesting graph, and you can see when I created this slideshow. Um, and you can also see from this, from this graph here, it's the graph of, of, of most popular search terms on a particular day. I can't remember what day it is here, and it's too small for me to read at the moment. Um, but what day was this? The day that Steve Jobs died. When did he die? He must have died a few minutes before that, before that line started to crawl up there and, and, and hit a peak. Right? People are searching for Steve Jobs. Why? Because the news just came out that Steve Jobs died. So what's a query? A query is a question. And every time you type into Google, think about it as asking a question. And immediately that should tell you that the kind of questions that you ask, you may think are generally pretty simple. You know, I'm only at the question I ask is words, three words in a row. That's a question. Isn't there more, aren't there more specific questions I can ask? And the answer is definitively yes. The way that most people search is really very simple. It's that simple one box where you just type a bunch of words and hope for the best. Well, what I'm going to tell you now is all the other stuff behind querying, all the stuff that makes it so that um, the questions that you can ask are far more sophisticated than, one, than the ones that people usually ask. And at the end of this lecture, you should be ready to go out and be a total Google power searcher and be able to do Google searches that nobody else knows how to do. And they're all right there in front of your face. So they're, they're not hard at all. It's just a matter of paying attention and not being so lazy as to just type into that one box. Now, of course, I'm as lazy as everybody else. I don't do Google Power searches nearly as much as I could, but when I do, I always get much better results. Okay, so let's start with this thing called the, the Google Query Builder. It's under Advanced Search. If you go to the Google page and you look around real carefully, you'll see a little link that says Advanced Search. If you click that Advanced Search, uh, that advanced search link, you'll go to a page like this, and instead of having a single box, you got a whole page full of stuff that you could use to format your question, to format your query. So let's go through, this is the summary, this is all the possible different things that you could do, but let's go through a few of the different operations, a few of the things that, um, that are possible. In order, to, in order to, to get to this idea of what's possible and how can you ask more advanced questions, I'm going to first have to talk about this idea of Booleans named after this guy George Boole, who was really big in logic and invented this idea, that invented a lot of the ideas that we use now for logic and that run most of our computers. Um, and the idea of Booleans is that you can combine simpler things with very simple words, and, or, and not. Those are called the Booleans, an and, an or, and a not. And just from your knowledge of English, there's a lot, there's a lot we could do, right? We could spend hours on Booleans, and I'm only going to just spend a minute or two on them. The idea is, if I say, I want, um, uh, I want Android and HTC, HTC is the brand of a phone, right? or Android and Google, or Android and, um, Android and smartphone, or Android and PC, I'll only get pages that have both of those terms on them, right? Android 
and PC, Android and HTC. But if I say Android or PC, I'll get pages that have Android on them, plus pages that have PC on them, plus pages that have both of them on there. Can you see how those are two different questions? One says, I only want pages that have both of these terms. The other one says, I want pages that have either. So I could say Android or Droid, right? And then I'll get the pages that say Android and the pages that say Droid. And I won't be, I won't, I won't be wondering whether I'm getting the Droid pages as well. Um, there are other ways that Google might actually return the Droid pages if you say Android, but you get the idea. Okay, so we have and, or, and not. If I say and, that means I want a page with both of them on there. And it turns out that that word and is what Google automatically inserts every time you put a space in your search, in your search term. Right? So I say information management. That really means to Google information and management. And it'll take those pages that have information and management and put them first. Now, Google's, you know, Google's very complicated and we could, you know, there's a lot of subtlety to it. So if I put in a phrase where I don't have a, a more obscure phrase than in information management, where there are no pages with both of them, it'll turn around and it'll start looking for pages with either of them because it always wants to give you something. Okay, but at any rate, if you type in a regular query and there's a space in it, that's taken to be an and. You can literally put in the word or, and I say information or management, and notice the difference in the search results here. The top one is information and management, and I get back 251 million, small 251 million. And if I say information or management, I get back 11 billion, right? So there's pages with information or management, and they could be all sorts of managements, but this one has, a pa has pages with only information and management on it, so that means it's going to return a whole lot fewer results. Okay, and then I can say information with a little dash there. See the circle dash? Information dash management means information but not management. I want pages that say information, but they should not say the word management on them. And that's going to give me fewer results as well, in this case, 7 million. So the fewest results are pages that say information, but don't say the word management anywhere on it. Okay, got the idea? So that's querying, and that's the, that's the idea of Booleans. Booleans are ands, ors, and nots, and you can use those to make much more specific questions. The next idea is, where do I want to look on the page for this? So you can see in that advanced search, po the advanced search page, you can, drop down the, you can drop down the menu there and, and say, I only, want the, I only want where information management is in the title of the page. Why would I want that? Because if it's in the title, it probably is the main subject of the page. It's probably the, the, the main thing that's going on on the page. Now, Google also tries to take care of this for you a little bit by ranking higher the pages that have information in the title, but you can be very explicit about it, and you can choose on the advanced search page the words uh, in the title of the page, and now it'll only return pages, it'll only give you back pages that have the phrase you typed in the title. Now, notice what gets pasted in here, all in title colon. For each of these advanced search methods, you can either choose it on that uh, in the advanced search screen, or you can type in a special word that has that meaning. And I've showed you both here. Okay, next, literal phrase. This one is really good. If you haven't done this one before, you should definitely learn this one. It's really easy to do. All you do is put quotes around the phrase, and it will only give you pages that have that entire phrase on it. Now, if you put words like the and a uh, in the phrase, I think it'll ignore those. Those are, as I've said before, called stop words. Those are words that don't count. They're little words that really don't have a whole lot of meaning and Google doesn't pay attention to them. And last time I checked, they're excluded from all search results, and they're also even excluded from these literals. Okay, so check this out. I can get down to one result, right? When I search for literally information management, I get 36, uh, 36 million results. That's still a lot of results. But if I take an entire phrase, um, and I took this entire phrase and put it in quotes, I can get one result back the one page that has that entire phrase on it. So this is a pretty good way of narrowing down your search to very literal phrases. Of course, you got to be looking for something that's, a, that's a, a literal phrase. Literal phrase, by the way, I, I haven't defined it, means all of those words in that order on the page. Information space management, exactly like that on the page. Okay, there's a ton of other query stuff you can do, and I'll point you here um, to the URL that I put on this page that has the complete list of all the different things you could do. And it would be fun for you to play around with that so that you could be a Google, a Google searcher that's way beyond the people who just type into the text box. A couple of things that I'll, man, I'll, I'll, I'll mention is the idea of around. Around means within so many words. 
So I did this, this search and, and noticed the paltry results that come back, only uh, whatever it is, 8,000 pages that have the words information management somewhere within 10 words of the name Bob Boyko. So Bob Boyko associated with information management within 10 words, before or after, by the way, returns only a very few results because there's very few pages that are like that. Then I can use this star, and star means any old word, but I want information, uh, like information content management, or information decision management, or information technical management, or any word that goes in there, that star stands in for any word. So those are some fun things that you could do with querying. The reason I bring them up is not to, um, not to, to tell you to go out and do it, but to give you this idea that the query, the question, is way more complicated than simply just look up all the words in the right places on, in the index. There's a lot, lot going on there. All right, let me cover a couple of more topics, and then, um, and then I'll show you kind of how this works. And it's cool to think about how does, it, how does it make all these queries? How does it make these things happen? The one I want to tell you about is this idea of synonym expansion. Now, you know what a synonym is, right? It's a word that's like another word. In this case, we have um, uh, the word pictures and graphics which are synonyms, right? A picture is a graphic. And so when I'm searching for pictures, I also want pages that talk about graphics. I don't only want pages that talk about pictures. And Google, in many cases, is smart enough to say, well, you know, if you search for pictures, you probably want pages with graphics as well. And in fact, it even has a little bit of a syntax here, syntax meaning a way that it says that. You searched for pictures, but it returns something that said graphics. And notice graphics is in gray, but pictures is in bold. If you found one that said pictures, that word will be in bold, but if you found one that said graphics, it'll still tell you, but it also gives you this indication that it did that. So there's so much more to querying in Google than you think is going on. It's just amazing, and it really is worth your time to look into it a little bit more. And certainly for this class, I want you to know the basics of what I just laid out of the more sophisticated parts of querying. One more thing to talk about, just because it's kind of fun, is the idea of Google Whack. And you can go to googlewack.com if you want to learn more about it, but there's sort of a running contest for people to be able to find Google queries that return just one result. Now, I already showed you a Google query that returned only one result, but it was kind of a trick, right? I mean, I took an entire long sentence and made it a literal by putting quotation marks around the end, and there was only one page in the entire world that had that huge long sentence on it, right? So that was, that's an easy way to do it. But you'll see the rules say that you can't put quotes around things. And it has to be, I think it's at least two words, yeah. Your query has to be at least two words, and with no quotes, which means an and between those words, like information and management is the example that I gave you, and it has to return only one page. Now, <laughs> the, ki the, the funny thing about it is if you find this page and you report it to Google Whack, you say, hey, look, I found the Google Whack page. You know, ain't I, ain't I cool? I found some Google, Google query that only returns one result. What does Google Whack do? Google Whack lists your Google Whack on their page and then what happens? Well, now it's on two pages. It was on the page that you originally found, and it's also on the Google Whack page. So any Google Whack that works automatically turns into a Google Whack that doesn't work because they put it on the Google Whack page. Okay, that's Google Whack, and it's just kind of a fun thing to, you know, to mention to you, to, to let you know that it's out there. All right, so let's, let's summarize querying. Let's summarize the, idea, the ideas that I've talked about. First of all, a query is a question. A question against, in our case, the Google index. So I said that Google goes out and indexes all these things, it puts it in its cache, it makes this enormous alphabetical list of words with citing where it came from, that's the web page as well as the position on the web page, and any different thing that you type in the Google box, or you type, uh, any, any single thing that you type in the Google box is going to be a question that's asked against that index. And the way the, qu the, way the, the question is phrased determines how it asks the question against the index. If I put that word and in between the word, uh, excuse me, if I put spaces, which Google interprets as an and between the words, then it's going to say, find me web pages that have both of those words in my index. So the web page has to have word A and word B. If I say or between them, it's going to say, find me all the web pages that either have this term or have that term, returning more results. If I say not, it'll say, find me this web page that has this word but cannot have this word. And all that information is contained in that index. It's all contained in the full text index of the, uh, that, that Google maintains. And so that index is really pretty cool. And it can answer pretty much any question that you want to ask about it. Okay, so we've talked, about, uh, we've talked about two of the three big subjects in Google search. One is indexing. 
The second is querying. The third one we need to talk about is results. You issue a query, it finds the right pages, it says, oh, it's on these 9,375 pages. Then how does it tell you that it's on those 9 million pages? And really, most importantly, which page does it put first as the one that it thinks you most want to see?